Hey y'all, welcome to Camira's Kitchen. I hope you guys are in that festive spirit, okay? Cause your girl is just ready for holiday everything. So today I am gonna show you some festive holiday appetizers, all right? They will work perfect before a meal or even if you're just going to have a little holiday mix and mingle with a couple of drinks, these would work perfectly. Y'all, let's go ahead and get started. Every good host needs a showstopper, something that is just going to draw in all your guests' attention and just make the table look beautiful. I think the perfect thing for that is a bamboo board. This one is from Amazon. I'm gonna link this in the description. You guys are going to absolutely love how I set up this board. When it comes to decorating for a holiday party, you really don't need to do much. When you have a nice tablecloth, maybe a little marble stand, some flowers, a little bit of garland, a candle, honey, throw a little pine cones in some places, and you're good to go. But what's really going to bring everything together is a lovely board. Not only is this board 15 by 13 inches, but it also has some hidden utensils tucked away that's going to make it easy for your guests to serve themselves. The ramekins that come with this board are perfect for your dips and jams and your jellies. It also comes with a fruit and veggie tray to put at the side. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you how I style this board so I can serve appetizers to all my guests. The first thing I'm going to show you how to make is a really colorful festive dip. Now y'all, some of the stuff I put in here, you guys might be like, I don't know girl if this is going to work, but let me just tell you something trust the process so i have some dried apricots and some dried cranberries i have a half a cup of each of them now you can mix up the different fruits you use but in total you're going to want about one cup of chopped dried fruits okay about this size or you could even do them a little bit bigger i am also going to take one green onion yep we doing onion and fruit okay this is going to be a little spicy sweet situation all right i'm going to chop that up and then i am going to add some pecans now i didn't really measure the pecans but you could add about anywhere from a fourth of a cup to a half of a cup of chopped pecans if okay you're not allergic okay now add eight ounces of cream cheese and y'all please soften y'all cream cheese because i did not soften mine and baby i broke my first spoon trying to mix it okay so i'm going to put in a little bit of ginger and then for a little kick i'm going to add some of this scotch bonnet hot sauce as well as this mango habanero now you do not need both of them if you want a mild version, just use the mango habanero. If you want the kick, then just go for the scotch bonnet sauce. But you guys know I got a bunch of stuff in this kitchen, so I went ahead and put both. Now I am going to add the juice of half of an orange. It ended up being about two tablespoons because my orange was a little bit dry, okay? Then I am going to mix this together and then add about a teaspoon of that orange zest. Now don't get crazy with the orange zest because too much orange zest will make the dip a little bit bitter, okay? So I'm gonna add that in there and then mix that up well. Throw in your chopped fruits, nuts, onions, and a little bit of salt just like a little pinch that's going to help bring out all of the flavors mix this together and then I like to place this in the fridge to chill for at least two hours I feel like it helps the flavors really just meld together and y'all this served with a buttery cracker like a Ritz or a club cracker is very nice y'all now I'm going to teach you a little food content creator trick this is the ramekin I wanted to use but I did not have enough dip so I went in and filled the bottom with foil and then I put my dip on top okay y'all ain't nobody in your house gonna complain if you do this and if they do complain they shouldn't even be at your party no ways all right so go ahead and ruffle that top make it look cute and then you put it in the fridge covered in plastic wrap until you are ready to put it out 
The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a grown up version of a pig in the blanket, y'all. We doing puff pastry piggy in the blanket, okay? So go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Now, I feel like puff pastry literally be saving the day when it comes to appetizers. Because first of all, I'm definitely not going to make it from scratch. So I'm definitely buying it frozen. And it just automatically makes things look a little bit bougie, okay? So I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to cut it into roughly two inch, probably should have been a little bigger than two inch squares. And you'll see why later on when I show the end result for this. But I'm going to just cut this up and I'm going to need at least 24 of these puff pastry squares. I'm then going to take some of these little smoky sausages and baby, I'm going to wrap that piggy okay up in that blanket all right now to make it look cute i wanted to just do it on like a little angle kind of like a little baby swaddled in a blanket i think you guys can see the vision okay i did not have any parchment paper so instead i just laid down some foil and sprayed a bit of olive oil on my pan to make this a bit more grown up i am going to take some butter i'm going to mix some maple syrup some dijon mustard as well as a little bit of that w sauce and i'm going to make a bit of a glaze to put on top of these this actually really elevates the flavor a lot if you don't have like a little glaze and a really nice dipping sauce i feel like this appetizer can come across slightly juvenile and that is definitely not what i'm going for so i'm going to brush this glaze over the top of each one of these and i'm going to bake this in the oven for about 13 minutes you will know it's done when it's nice and puffy and it's nice and golden brown for a dipping sauce i am going to make a kind of a sweet and spicy mustard and garlic aioli so first i'm going to go in with about a fourth of a cup of qp mayo and then i'm going to add some stone ground mustard as well as some dijon mustard i think the stone ground mustard is key because it is going to add that spicy flavor and it also looks beautiful in this dip to balance out everything you add in a bit of maple syrup a little bit of lemon juice and just a touch of garlic and this tastes very grown okay you can't be serving your piggy in a blanket with a little ketchup and think you doing something baby do a little something like this okay people gonna think you paid top dollar for this dip now i just kind of felt out the measurement until i got it to be the way i want it to be but i will put some estimated measurements down in the description box do you all know that one person who be sleeping with their leg outside of the blanket because they feel hot that's what these pig in the blankets was doing okay they was just becoming unwrapped in the oven that's why i said i think i should have made the square a little bigger so maybe you try a two and a half inch square okay but it don't matter my people didn't care they ate these up all right now i'm going to make this into a wreath shape i've put the dipping sauce in the middle and i'm just putting the piggies all over my platter to give this full-blown holiday festive vibes i am taking a bunch of rosemary and i'm going to go all around the side of the platter it is going to make this feel super festive y'all you have to try this okay my mama saw a picture of this and she was like best piggies and blankets i have ever seen in my life and y'all the mustard dipping sauce just so good now if you do not want to get puff pastry because y'all we know it is high you can use crescent rolls but you may just have to adjust the cooking time so i'm going to set this beautiful pig in a blanket wreath right in the center then i am going to put my dip on top of my marble plate and as well as some crackers that i think would pair well with this dip do you guys like doing some charcuterie? I'm gonna show you guys how I do a bit of a fancy charcuterie when I want to impress somebody, okay? So y'all, you can choose from a variety of different cheeses. I like to choose a mixture of soft cheese, hard cheese, sweet cheese. Baby, I even use some string cheese, okay? Don't play with me, all right? Now I am going to do a bit of styling with the brie. Honey, when you do this, people are going to think you know how to entertain, okay? So my brie has been in the freezer for about 20 minutes. It is going to make it easy for me to cut off the top rind. Now, honestly, I hate the rind. I feel like the rind tastes like dirty socks, 
okay but I'm gonna do a little food styling with it so once I cut the rind off I am going to just spread out the brie just to make it look smooth and then I'm gonna pick a holiday cookie cutter in this case I am going to choose a Christmas tree but you could choose the angel the star gingerbread man whatever you want okay I am going to cut out that shape in the rind and then I'm going to place it in the middle alternatively you could cover the brie with jam and then place the rind with the cutout on top next these are some cracker options y'all I like to pull out the bougie crackers when I'm trying to do a charcuterie board so make sure you definitely have some nice artesian crackers but just to fill up space in the board in a really affordable way I like to take a little bit of baguette spray it with a little bit of olive oil I broil it in the oven until it gets nice and toasted and then I'll allow it to cool you can choose to rub some of them with a little bit of garlic if you want some savoriness or you can all leave them plain so that people can use them in a sweet application this next appetizer can either go on your charcuterie board or you can make it and let it stand on its own so i am going to take a nice seeded cracker it's got to be something with you know some good flavor i'm going to add on some goat cheese and a little bit of a fruit spread in this case i'm using sour cherry but a fig jam would be excellent and then i'm going to top it with a bit of prosciutto if you don't play with the pig you can use pumpkin seeds and a little bit of honey instead now for my manchugo cheese I am going to do some food styling with this okay so I'm going to cut off that end rind and then I'm going to cut this into about a fourth of an inch slices what I like to do when I have a nice wedge cheese is to cut these slices and then style them by flipping them back and forth this is going to add a lot of texture to your board and it really is going to make a statement and really draw the eye in to that cheese plus it is just so simple and easy to do now I told y'all I use string cheese and baby the only thing I do is I take that string cheese and I wrap it in some prosciutto then I am going to cut it in half and honey okay you got a nice little snack now to style my board, the first thing I'm gonna do is place the cheeses. I place out the brie, some cut up Gouda, as well as that Manchego cheese. Then I will start filling in all the gaps with just some other large items, like that toasted baguette. A very beautiful way to style pepper salami is to just fold it into a little flower. So just fold it into fourths and then I just like to stack them onto each other until they just make a beautiful display. I'm also going to be adding pretzels and anywhere I feel like the color is just getting a bit blah, I'm going to put in some bright fruits just to brighten up that area. You always wanna add something sweet as well as something a little crunchy to your board. So I'm using dark chocolate and nuts as well as some fruit for sweetness. On the top, I'm gonna be putting honey, some olives, and some more jams. And right into those trivets, I'm going to be putting some pistachios. On the side, I feel like that is the perfect place to store all of your larger fruits when you are styling your board you want to think abundance you just want it to look like there is just so much food y'all you want this thing to be busting out the seams just like you trying to be this holiday honey you trying to be busting out them seams y'all get me i love that this board comes with utensils because honey i don't want nobody dirty hands touching the food baby use the little poker that it come with you hear me for the side tray, I am going to add a spinach and artichoke dip, but you could also add some ranch. And then I'm going to add some vegetables for the people who want to act like they're going to be healthy, even though it's a holiday party. You know there's always someone still trying to be keto over Christmas. If you don't want to put veggies in here, another good idea is to add like a sweet cream cheese dip in the middle and then put a variety of fruits and little chocolates and maybe even some graham crackers. What do you guys think of this holiday display? Thank you YZS Bamboo House for sponsoring this video. Check the description box for the link to this board. When you get it, tell me how much you love it in the comments. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. God bless.